I've been to two world championships in mm-hmm. Helsinki and in Finland in uh, Tampere. And, and I mean, the fan support is terrific. It yes. doesn't matter who's playing. The fans are there. So as much as we love our hockey in, in Canada, uh, certainly there's other countries that love their hockey just as much. And, and they're getting a chance to host these events. Welcome to Ground Control, the official podcast of the Winnipeg Jets, the holiday edition. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody. This is the last podcast before the 2024 portion of the NHL Jets schedule begins. And my special guest is Dennis Bayak, the former voice of the Winnipeg Jets. Dennis, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, how uh, have you taken some time to see what's going on here in Winnipeg with the Jets and how well they've been playing so far? Oh, absolutely. There's not many games that uh, that I don't get to watch. Uh, there's the odd one that uh, with the time change and that kind of uh, messes things up from a dinner standpoint or whatever. But uh, no, I've watched uh, the majority of the games and uh, it's fun to watch and see what they're doing. It's great to see them having a great campaign. And I know there's been some adversity with, uh, you know, Coach Rick Bonus. We wish them nothing but the best. And that, but uh, certainly uh, the team is exciting to watch and, and having a lot of success right now. Just got to try and get healthy and stay healthy. Yeah. Do you, do you think, do you ever think while you're watching this going down right now, how good this team could be if, you know, when, you know, both Gabe Velarde and Kyle Connor are all together uh, at the same time, of course, Rasmus Kapari is still at the lineup. They're still waiting for Billy Hanel to come back. It just makes you wonder how good this team can be if they can just stay healthy. Well, the trade with LA was so good. Yeah. I mean, regardless, it wouldn't matter whether Pierre-Luc Dubois was was leading the National Hockey League in scoring. It was still a very good trade for the Winnipeg Jets because it brought in some depth. And and that's what they lacked. That's what they needed. And uh, Kevin Sheveldayoff made that deal. And it will be nice to see Rasmus Kupari get back in on a full-time basis because with my coverage of World Juniors over the years, uh, I've seen quite a bit of Rasmus Kupari, and I think he's a pretty good hockey player. So, but yeah, it's great to see what uh, the new guys are doing uh, with the injuries. What it's done, and this has always been toyed with whether Nikolai Ehlers and Mark Schleifley uh, could play together. And the feeling always was, if you left them together long enough, they would figure it out how to play with each other. And uh, I know Nikolai was uh, critical of his game after the game last night but uh i mean he's on a very nice run here right now so when everybody gets back certainly rick bonus will have some options and and things you can look at and and spread that offense around a little bit that the lowry line is as good as there is in the national hockey league and uh get healthy and uh see where it takes you dennis you you've covered and been around nikolai ehlers for such a long time do you still you know, marvel at the fact that he's so critical of himself on a night where the rest of us are probably thinking that he had a great night. I know. And, uh, I mean, self-evaluation can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing, I think, sometimes. And and you're not going to be at your best for 82 games. It uh, doesn't matter whether you're Wayne Gretzky, Connor McDavid, or Nikolai Ehlers. There's going to be periods. There's going to be games where things aren't going 100% for you. And that's part of it. That's part of life for that matter, let alone sports. So uh, it's really nice to see him on this little run that he has going right now. Uh, And we'll see where it goes from there. I mean, there's areas you like to see the power play get a little better. And Mm -hmm. think penalty kill stats are a little bit deceiving because got off to a bit of a tough start uh, and that, but, uh, but I like what I see from this team and certainly like what I see with that top line with Nikolai Euters on it. Dennis Beck, our special guest here on Ground Control, the official podcast, the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, clearly, I brought you on to talk about the Jets and also how are you enjoying enjoying pseudo retirement right now? I guess because you're not there just quite yet. Well, it's it's been enjoyable. Uh, spent quite a bit of time in Arizona. That's where we are now, and enjoying the uh, the very nice that they're having down here compared to uh, to the last couple of years. Um, much like Canada, where in British Columbia last year in Kelowna, we had so much snow by this time and it looks like it's going to be a brown Christmas or a green Christmas, I guess, in, in, uh, in Kelowna. So, uh, certainly from a weather standpoint, it's been very different, but, uh, no, it's been good. Uh, very much enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, we did a little bit of traveling and we took some uh, different routes on the way down here to, uh, to do a little bit of sightseeing, which we wanted to do. So, uh, it was all good. So enjoying that. And, uh, but the last, uh, 
10 days or so, a lot of work, uh, you know, getting ready for this World Junior Championship, which will be my last official event, and uh, move on from there. But uh, looking forward to it, and it's always a good tournament. Whenever things are wrapping up, you're, you're forced by many people, such as your good friend myself here, uh, to look back on things. And let, let's go back to your first World Junior Tournament. Do you remember the assignment and, and the excitement that came with that first assignment? Yeah, the uh, I remember when I got the call from Paul Graham at TSN said, uh, you know, we'd like you to come in and do the World Junior. It's going to mean missing a few Jets games, but uh, we'd like you to come in and do it. And uh, I mean, some of it goes all the way back to uh, right off the hop that second year in Winnipeg when Shane Knighty and I went to Wafa uh, to do TSN radio. And uh, Jacob Trubo, I think, was in that one. There was a few other guys that were in that one. So uh, that was the, uh, the first experience. And then after when the tournament was in Canada for a couple of years, uh, you mentioned Nikolai Ehlers and yeah. the one in Toronto back in 2015. Uh, I mean, the Toronto fans loved that Denmark team. They were so exciting. And and uh, I remember the celebration in the dressing room when Denmark won its first ever World Junior Hockey League game. And uh, it was a big turning point for that country, big turning point for those young players. And But lots of highlights over the years, uh, some good, some bad. Uh, the 2016 World Junior in Finland, I think, was one of the best. Uh, that was the Finland win that uh, featured Patrick Line, Sebastian Aho, and, Yul and uh, Jesse Pugliarvi. What a terrific line they were. Uh, so a lot of highlights. And keep in mind that uh, I don't spend a lot of time on the Canadian side. Yeah, yes, of course. A lot of my highlights are involving European teams and European players. But the one in Buffalo uh, may be the downside of it, uh, very poorly attended. And it was so cold in Buffalo. It was just freezing. Uh, after day one, uh, you know, our people that were up in the broadcast booth with us went out and got uh, heaters oh because it was gosh. just freezing up there. It was because <laughs> there was no fans in the building. You could actually, mm -hmm. you could feel the wind coming in from the outside. And, and, uh, and you know, they maybe overpriced it. And, and as a result, the fan support wasn't very good in Buffalo. Then, of course, you had the, the one at Red Deer that was canceled after it started, uh, too many players coming down with COVID. Uh, the summer tournament, uh, for the first time ever, the World Junior was played in the summertime with no fans. You know, so that one will stand out. And, uh, you know, lots of other ones. I mean, Russia getting kicked out uh, was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet it certainly uh, took away a very good team from the tournament. But at the same time, it gave some other countries the opportunity to to get better. And I think we're seeing it with Latvia, we're seeing it with Germany, and we're seeing some of these countries just get a little bit better now that, uh, you know, that they're getting the opportunity to play at the top level. And that's where you always have this controversy, but should you have that many teams in it when some teams just can't compete? Well, that's the way you get better. You get better by competing against real good teams. And, uh, you know, one in Victoria where the Victoria fans became big fans of the Kazakhstan team. Uh, that didn't play very, you know, didn't have a lot of top players, but was they tried so hard and, and everything else. So I think when you combine the players, the fan support uh, and everything else, that's what makes this this tournament as popular as it is. And then, of course, you go back to last year when uh, the one in Moncton and Halifax was, I think, exactly what the hockey world needed. And uh, Connor Bedard just became such a, a household name that, uh, after Christmas, the teams that played the Regina Pass were the benefactors because of, uh, of just how we were coming to the games just to watch Connor Bedard. So, yeah, it's been great. Uh, I've loved every minute of it and looking forward to this one too. Dennis, what, what would you say to those who, you know, criticize the tournament itself because it's it's a TSN event, right? They pump it up the way it is. But so, how do you respond to those types of critiques for a tournament that is just so huge to more people than, than you know, the average fan think? You know what I'm trying to say? Well, I think that maybe you're going down the path that we put too much pressure on the young guys. Yeah. Is, is that kind of one of the areas that, you know, yes. I, I think with, I think with U16 teams now, U18s get covered very well. Mm -hmm. uh, by TSM. Those games are all televised. Uh, the women's game is getting televised a lot yes. now. So I think the players kind of 
learn to appreciate that pressure. I'm sure there's some that it is a burden for them. And mm -hmm. yet, I don't, I'm don't. i not sure if you ever asked Connor Bedard, do you think there was too much pressure on you last year? I don't think he would say, yes, there was. I think he yeah, loved right. absolutely every minute of it. And, and uh, you know, you look at what, what the, the Czechia team has done, what Slovak, uh, the Slovaks have done. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big tournament, but and it does get covered a lot in Canada. There's no doubt. I mean, yes. it becomes a Christmas tradition. And people take time off work if you if you are working through the holidays, uh, and I guess there are some players that probably uh, have a little trouble handling the pressure, mm -hmm. but uh, it gets them ready for what lies ahead. Because as you well know, once you get to the National Hockey League, uh, you put a few bad games together, and, and people and and uh, the fans don't care that you're 19 or 20. Uh, you're yeah. in the National Hockey League, and you're expected to perform. How about the smaller, like the smaller cities in Canada? Clearly, clearly, this our country hosts this event quite often. But you know, you you mentioned last year's tournament. Is that the right place for the World Juniors rather than the larger markets, say like a Toronto or Montreal? Well, that's been the big change in uh, sports, and mm -hmm. and I'll stick with hockey because that's the one that I've been involved with, and it goes back to the Memorial Cup. Even uh, Memorial Cup was always very successful in places like Saskatoon, Kamloops, and now every once in a while they look for bigger venues. And But the World Junior is a real good example. It's gone from, from smaller centers to bigger venues because it all boils down to how many fans can you put in the building. And, and uh, you know, that's where Ottawa comes into play. That's where Vancouver comes into play. Toronto and Montreal had the two of them back to back, uh, back in, in 14, 15, 15, 16. So you do look for bigger buildings and, you know, I guess it's down to dollars and yes. And uh, but I do think if you can have two venues, there's nothing worse than playing games at this level with no fans in the building. So I do think it's important to have a couple of venues, one that's a little smaller and one that can handle the 15, 16, 12, whatever thousand fans that that are going to come to the games. But I think when you have Latvia playing Germany and, and Slovakia playing Czechia, these teams, I still think it's important that it doesn't matter if the building seats 20 or 3,000. When you think of, okay, so like, the, 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 no question the tournaments in our country are fantastic. How much have you enjoyed the European tournaments over the years? And I know it's, you're not exactly, you know, you're not in a resort area, but how about Gothenburg, Sweden? You've been there before. How important is it to play in these venues uh, going forward? Well, it's important for for those centers because their hockey programs. Uh, I mean, you look at the. I mean, I talked about the 2016 one in Helsinki. I mean, I've been to two world championships in mm -hmm. Helsinki and in Finland, in uh, Tampere, and and I mean the fan support is terrific. It yes. doesn't matter who's playing; the fans are there. So, as much as we love our hockey in in Canada, uh, certainly there's other countries that love their hockey just as much and. And they're getting a chance to host these events. Uh, I've been to two. I've been to World Championships and World Juniors in Ostrava. Uh, Ostrava and Trinich uh, a couple of years back uh, held the World Junior. And just terrific support in both centers. So it's. I think it's important to send this around. The World Junior will always be popular in Canada. The World Championship will never be popular in Canada because of the mm -hmm. time of the year you're going right up against the the Stanley Cup playoffs, so it works out good for TSN and and that because the games are during the day at the World Championship and that. But uh, these countries love when those tournaments come there. Obviously, the economic spinoff is is important to their economy, uh, but at the same time, the fan base is there. Uh, I mean, World Junior, you'd like to see it hit a jackpot. In uh, we'll see where where the next one is and how it how it does, uh, you know, because the World Junior just isn't as much as that development program that they have in, in Michigan is terrific, and it's produced some great hockey players and some great teams. Yeah, and the U.S. is the U.S. is probably the the favorite to win this year's World Junior. And hey, yet, you when you have when you have the tournaments in the U.S., you can't seem to get that same buzz. Yeah, that, that's the wild part. Dennis, I know I have you trapped here for a second. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to do a play of the week. Uh, we'll be back right after this with more Dennis Beck and the World Juniors. 
Great chat so far with Dennis Bayak, the former voice of the Winnipeg Jets on TSN. Uh, we'll get back to him momentarily. But, hey, we got to do the play of the week, you know. And I know there was another game against the Boston Bruins on the Friday, but we got to pre-record this because the holidays are here. Everybody needs a break. But you do not need a break from the top line of the Winnipeg Jets. They are on fire right now. Gabe Velarde, Mark Scheifele, and Nikolai Ehlers seem to be the only people in the play of the week uh, as of this time. And that is no different in the game against the Detroit Red Wings. A beautiful soccer-style pass from Nikolai Ehlers is our play of the week. We'll be back with Dennis Back after this. For Velarde, carries it into the corner for Ehlers, back in behind the net. Ehlers, now for Velarde, out in front for Shifley, a shot, he scores! What a beauty goal, and Winnipeg has scored it all, three periods, and they lead it 5-2. I think Nikolai Ehlers ends up kicking this puck out to beat two Red Wings. Right to Velarde, who's in a perfect puck support spot. Are you looking for something to do over the holidays? Well, we have an answer for you. Go to winnipegjets.com slash tickets. Everything you need is right there. You can go to the New Year's Eve Eve game. It's a matinee affair against the Minnesota Wild. Or on January 2nd, the first game of 2024, the Tampa Bay Lightning are in town. And I guarantee you right now, those games are never boring. You don't have a bad choice here. It's the Wild on New Year's Eve Eve or the Tampa Bay Lightning on January 2nd. Get tickets to one or both at winnipegjets.com slash tickets. Hi, I'm Cole Perfetti. And this is the Ground Control Podcast. Dennis Beck, our special guest here on Ground Control, the official podcast of the Winnipeg Jets, uh, just about to take off for Sweden for the World Juniors, his final World Juniors. And you just mentioned before the break, Dennis, about the United States. They're in your pool this year. Um, one of the gold medal favorites. What have you, from your research clearly and what you've seen, what, what do you like about this U.S. team uh, in, in your pool? The teams that they play against might need to bring their own puck. <laughs> Um, no, I know. I don't know. I don't know if there's if one puck is going to get shared very equally yeah. uh, with that USA team. You look at the ones that are coming up, the players that are coming up from the U18 team uh, that was so dynamic, and you look at the offensive numbers of of the Cutter Gauthiers and the Snugger Roods and the younger players that are coming from that U18 squad. And this is a very, very good team defensively. Lane Hudson is, is another terrific year in college. And uh, if Trey Augustine can give them the goaltending that he probably will because he's his track record says that he can do it. Uh, this is a very, very good team and a team that offensively is very gifted. And the key to playing against them is try and keep them in their own end for as long as you possibly can because uh, it's a very, very offensive-minded squad and very gifted. I mean, when you think of oh, – clearly Jets fans have, you know, they're going to be cheering for Canada, but at some point you you watch the prospects. And Rucker McGrory was named captain the other day of the United States. Um, he has made himself, you know, quite the legend here in Winnipeg in the short time that he's been a Winnipeg Jet, clearly from the, pros or the development camp this past uh, summer – uh, it's, there was a question at one point that he was he even going to make the tournament. Now he's captain. What have you thought of young Rucker McGrory in the short time that you've, you've seen him play? Well, and they were really paying a lot of attention to Team USA was to what his health was, whether yeah. or not he'd be back. And I think even if it meant missing the first few games, he'll miss the odd game at the start. I don't know where his health status is, but to Team USA, it was imperative to have him on the roster because they wanted to put that C on his jersey. That's how much they think leadership skills, uh, quality person in the dressing room. Uh, you've seen what he does on the ice and a very, very key part, because if there is, if there is going to be some rough moments for team USA and there will be, there always is, you know, it's going to be like him that are going to be in that room, settling everybody down back to what we do best here plan because uh even though the tournament is in sweden uh these players back to what we talked about before these young players know what the expectation of this team is and uh that's going to be their challenge older players like rutger are going to be very critical uh to them attaining what where they want to get to to in this tournament 
Canada's clearly in Group A as we talk with Dennis Bayak, uh, the former voice of the Winnipeg Jets, uh, doing his last World Junior Tournament, this time in Sweden. So you, you, you have the United States, a clear favorite. Are there anybody, the, the Czechias, the Slovakias, the Switzerlands, the Norway, that can make things interesting for the United States in, in Group B? Well, Slovakia is an interesting team. Czechia had their their run last year, a mm-hmm. real good team. And, and uh, you know, like Canada, some of these teams are dealing with players not being on the roster because they're in the National Hockey League. Uh, but Slovakia could do some damage. If they can, sometimes teams like Slovakia, Czechia's gotten over it, I think. I yeah. still think at times Slovakia looks at, at who they're playing and their mindset is we can't win this game. And by a little, I think they're getting because they've got a lot of first round picks mm-hmm. uh, on this roster and they can come together as a team. And years ago, Czechia was the team. It didn't matter where the players played. When they all got back together, they just simply played that style. And Slovakia, if they can get to their style, because their, you know, their, their coaching staff is always dealing with trying to instill some confidence in, in this group. And there's a lot of first-round picks. There's a lot of drafted players. They have some size. And uh, if it comes down to uh, a one game event, who knows what might happen in the quarterfinals. And uh, that day is the quarter because that's the day you lose losing. Uh, after that, you're playing for a medal, but uh, that's the tough day. But I do think uh, uh, is, is going to be okay. Yeah. But I did Slovakia do some damage. Okay, so thoughts on your last tournament? Like, has it gone by fast? Uh, are there any, you know, re- you know, regrets? Through, you know, anything like that? That uh, this is this is coming to a close so quickly. Jamie, I don't live in the past. Yeah, uh, decisions I know you don't. Uh, you know, we don't make decisions uh, quickly. Uh, I talk things over with uh, with my best friend and my wife Bev, mm-hmm. and uh, we kind of map out a path as to what we want to do and where we want to go. And uh, then decisions are made and uh, no regrets. Do I miss uh, what I did in Winnipeg and what I did in the National Hockey League? Absolutely. I miss the people. I miss sitting around at practice and, and talking hockey with you and, the, and everybody else in that corner at the, at the arena. Uh, I miss the people that I worked with and, uh, and that. And, and I try not to bother people too much, but every once in a while I'll fire up. So, uh, whether it be Shane Knighty and Gary Lawless, if I'm watching the, the Vegas broadcast, or Kevin Sawyer and Dan Robertson, if it's the Jets broadcast, whatever. So, uh, but I, I do, I miss the people more than anything else. And that's what it'll be. That's why this world junior was a good one because a lot of times like last year, one group was in Halifax. Uh, we were in Moncton. Mm-hmm. Uh, the odd time it happens that everybody's in the same city. If there's two facilities to handle uh, the world junior, and that's the case this year in Gothenburg, there's two cities or there's two venues there. So everybody is in the same city. And, oh, and I think that's important. We're all at the same hotel. Uh, we're all there together. So it'll be a good, it'll be a good tournament to kind of uh, be with everybody one last time and then uh, pass this on to somebody else and let somebody else have the fun that I've had over the last number of years. Uh, clearly, Jets fans are, are listening or watching this podcast. Any messages for them uh, as, as we wrap up the pod? Well, I remember last year, uh, or two years ago, I guess, when I was retiring, I said, don't give up on this team. Mm-hmm. And uh, because there's a lot of good pieces in that dressing room and and they've moved it around. They brought in some other pieces. Uh, I just think for the Winnipeg Jets fans, you've got a very exciting team there. I know there's been some talk about attendance. We're not going to go down that road because I think it's going to get better and better. Uh, well. As fans appreciate how good this team is. And you get into the second half of the year where every game is going to mean something. They find themselves, as we talk right now, in top spot in the Central Division. So just enjoy what you have. Uh, you've got a very exciting team. It's it's great to see the players that came in as boys and now to see them play as men. The Josh Morris, he's uh, more yeah. to see the Mark Shifley's, uh, you know, and, and uh, remember, you know, back in junior, that was always the thing. You saw these these kids come in at 15 and 16 and then they left at 19 and 20 and they were such different people. Yes. Uh, they've matured so much. And that's the same in the national hockey league. You see these players come in at 19 and 20 and all of a sudden now they're 27, 28. And, and, uh, remember Paul Maurice saying, this is no longer a young team. And, <laughs> uh, 
you know, and, and uh, Rick Bonus and, and Scott Arneal have come in with the rest of the crew there and, and done a real good job. So you've got an exciting team. Enjoy it. Um, and other than that, just uh, wish everybody a very Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays. And and uh, I will always, always fondly remember my uh, my 11 years in Winnipeg. Dennis, uh, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, safe travels to Sweden. We'll be listening and watching your, your final World Juniors. And thank you so much for all you did here and uh, everything you've done for Hockey Canada as well. Appreciate it. Happy New Year and Merry Christmas to you and your family. Thank you, Jamie. All the best. That's it for this uh, final edition of 2024 or 2023. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, Ground Control, thank you so much to all our listeners and our viewers. We appreciate you. Have a great holiday season and Happy New Year to you. We'll see you next time.